So I'm making oxtails today and of course this meat has been washed twice. It has gone through its citrus wash which is to use uh, lime or lemon and it has also gone through the vinegar wash and I am now going to go ahead and add a little bit of salt. I'm using sea salt so even if it seems like it's a lot here understand that this is not overly salty like what you would find with the other salt that persons normally use like the table salt right going in now with uh, some black pepper i am adding a <coughs> little bit of chicken spice i know it's upstairs so people might be wondering what why chicken spice though the truth is chicken spice just has an interesting um ingredient that they've added to it which is the uh, anise powder and they also have added to it uh, celery and cumin. Now, I do have cumin, but I didn't have any celery salt. So that's why I went in with the chicken spice because it has some ingredients in it that, of course, I don't have single-handedly. Now, you know me. Every single thing I cook that is meat, it has to have a little touch of New Orleans. So I'm hitting this with a bit of Cajun seasoning. I am also going in with a little bit of cayenne pepper. My pepper lover. Just a little bit just a little bit to kick things up and i am also going in with some paprika not a lot everybody knows that paprika is actually dried sweet pepper right yeah so that's paprika and that is the dried seasoning now before i add the earth seasoning and what i'm referring to as earth seasoning as things like my uh, scallion and onions and thyme and garlic and ginger and of course scotch bonnet pepper I'm just gonna rub this up a little bit after which I will add some wet seasoning and then the others all right so I just want to massage this to make sure that all the pieces are nicely coated with these uh, rounded seasonings they call it grounded seasoning or ground seasoning, whatever you want to call it. But I guess you understand what I'm getting at. Just want to massage that in work in a little bit to ensure that all is well. All right, so that's done. That's nice. I'm now going to add some fish and meat sauce to this wet seasoning time. Fish and meat sauce. I am going to add a little bit of soy sauce and I'm using a ginger based soy sauce not too much just enough to give it a bit of color and you might wonder why I don't use browning on meat browning for me is really something that you should bake with but there are some persons who will use it on their meat if that floats your boat then that's fine but for me I like to go through the natural browning process which is just to put the meat in the pot in a little bit of oil and allow it to do its thing to get its color that's the kind of browning process that I like to use but soy sauce I find gives meat a nice sort of flavor especially this brand I think it's the island spice brand that I found that uh, has one that has additional ginger and you know I'm a lover of ginger when I am cooking so this already smells good all right so i've rubbed this up and now it is time for me to hit it with um what i call the herb seasoning now you can chop these up smaller if you'd like or you can just leave them here because the truth is when i'm going to be browning this off the seasoning is not going to go into it so it's neither here nor there so i'm adding the thyme and then i am adding some rings of onions I am adding some about six or five cloves of uh, crushed garlic bits and pieces of course of ginger can't leave that out have to have a good old ginger 
Then I'm hitting that with some scallions that I've chopped real fine. And I'm also going in with some pieces of scotch bonnet pepper. And I'm going to massage this. And once I'm through massaging it, I am going to be putting it in my uh, refrigerator just to rest and marinate, cover this with a saran wrap. And of course, I'll be ready shortly. So let's just go and work all of this in. I need to add to this some pimento. Sure that all of the meat here is massaged. You can crack the pimentos or you could just put the berries in there whole. It really doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you figure is going to work to release the flavor. So I have added a few pimento grains to this. Listen to me, people. You want to smell this. I keep telling you. YouTube, you need to come. Pay me for telling this, YouTube. You need to come with an icon that allows people to smell. Okay? Just really allows persons to smell. Let's go ahead. Um, massage this nicely. All the pieces. Nicely coated, right? So, that's it. We're just going to cover this up now. And allow it to sit, allow it to marinate before it's time for it to go through the browning process. Now, let me tell you a quick, a quick thing about oxtail uh, before I close out this section of the video. Oxtail to me is always better the day after it's cooked. So you can choose to cook oxtail a day in advance and then after it's cooked, you put it on the refrigerator and then you reheat when it is time for serving. It's nice when it just freshly cook, you know, but it is even nicer the day after. So you can choose. So for me, I am going to um, definitely cook this one day in advance of me using it because that's the way that I like it. So now we're going to go ahead and brown the oxtail. Like I said, we have to ensure that all the seasonings are taken off the, well, as much as possible because here's a little piece of scallion, but that's all right. You just want to make sure that the majority of the seasoning is taken off and that your oil is extremely hot. Again, you could do this on the stove top. I'm using the crock pot because ultimately it comes with a pressure component, which means that I could cook this entire meal in this one pot without you know having to toggle between a uh, stove top to brown and a pressure cooker to pressure and then stove top again to uh to what you might call this now to slow cook right so you doing everything in this one pot will save time so the oil is hot i'm just gonna go ahead and insert the pieces be careful when putting it in there you don't want to cause a splash where the oil is concerned I want to get done. <coughs> you just want to do this in small amounts. You don't want to drop that one. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You don't want to add this flat on there. Alright, I'm going to do it a work on it. And the work on it is going to be that fine. But you don't want to get your metal into this thing. So, what you're going to do. You just use the metal, put it in there, but do so that the sound cuts in the pot with the Both sides. Alright, so we're going to allow that to dry up. I'm just doing some batches until everything is finished. Alright, so this is what it looks like once the browning process has completed. So this meat is now ready to be slow cooked. All right, so when we're gonna slow cook this, it's gonna be sitting in this pot in its juices and in all the spices for about, let's say four hours, and it will just take its own time and get to that stage where it's nice and tender. So that's my next step, just adding the seasoning, which I'm about to do now with some water. I have it, everything in it nice. Smell good, nice aroma. All right, here we have it. 
pimento, all the things that we use to season the scallion, onion, thyme, garlic, ginger, all of those herbs. Just enough water to um, barely cover the meat. We don't want it to have too much water in there. We just want it to create its own juice and its own little, ultimately what will be its own little gravy, its own little sauce, right? And it's coming down to the end. So we're just going to put a lid on this and allow it to slow cook for about four hours and then it's gonna be good to go so I will show you what this looks like at the end of the cooking process. Our oxtail is cooked and we're allowing the sauce to reduce here. I am going to add a few pieces of sweet pepper to it. This already has the scallion and the onion, the ginger, the thyme, the garlic, every single thing is like really really minute here in the sauce so it's going to be rich and full of flavor. All right, so it's just a sweet pepper to be added here, and then we are done. Finished product, here we have our oxtail, nicely done. And of course, it has a little bit of sweet pepper as I promised right there. You can serve this up with some basmati rice and some fried plantains. Thank you so much for watching. All aboard, Kadu.